Greenberg back with Legends Radio and our next guest is an author, he's an educator, he's a buddy of mine, he's written the book CU and CCU, a light-hearted tale of my open-heart surgery. He is Steve Ludwig. How are you tonight, Steve? Hi, Evan. It's a pleasure to be on your show and I want to say hi to Cooley also. Hey, hey what's happening with <laughs> How are you? I hear in my 
Dorothy and Gadab Super, one of the nurses, said, would you like to listen to some music? Now I had a feeding tube down my throat. So I just kind of went, uh, uh, uh. So she said, well, what kind of, what kind of music do you like, Sinatra? Now, Sinatra is great. You know, but uh, I said to myself, she can move it up a, a, a generation or so. And I'm a child of the 60s. So I said to her, I tried to say with my breathing tube, I tried to say Beatles. I love the Beatles. So the nurse said, Eagles? Sure, we have the Eagles. So for the next two hours, I'm listening to the Eagles playing the hits over and over and over again. And the morphine's going through my body, and I'm hearing things like Hotel California, and I'm saying to myself, Oh, yeah, okay, I, I, I'm in the ICU, I'm in the CCU, but it's kind of like a hotel, and this new kid in town, and I'm saying, Yeah, all right. But suddenly, I hear, you know, there's talk on the street, it sounds so familiar, and all of a sudden the morphine kicking in, I'm hearing, in the background, I'm hearing, great expectations, everybody's watching you. Meanwhile, there's the morphine, like my sound effects, by the way, guys. So, so, nothing seemed to, uh, to click in until 48 hours later, but, uh, yeah, the whole book is about little things like that. Um, you know, it's funny, uh, when I was thinking about what I was going to say when I came on here, and when I heard Cooley was going to be your, your, your guest co-host of it, it um, my brother Bill, who's a real big music lover, see what you think about this, being you know, talking about my book. My brother, he never downloads single songs. He always downloads full albums, because he says, to him, downloading one song is like reading one chapter out of a book. And I said, yeah, it's a pretty good analogy, you know? And it, it's a shame that more people don't download full albums. I mean, you know, Evan, you wrote the book, I wrote my book, book and clearly your, your albums are your words. They're your books. Your songs are your chapters, and your, your CDs are your books. That's the way I look at music. Yeah, and don't you wish probably more people would download you know, the full albums, the full CDs, the whole effect? I think, I think, I, well, I agree wholeheartedly with that. I came up in the era where, where um, albums were revered as, you know, the big commodity. You know, you waited for an artist to put out a full album because you knew you were on your way to an adventure. And, uh, you know, on top of the music, you had the album covers, which incorporated, you know, some really interesting artwork back in, you yeah. know, how I agree 100%. So it was more than just listening to music. I mean, the music was a huge chunk of it, but it was also the visual adventure that you were taking on with the artwork, with some of the, the, the mention of producers and stuff like that. If you were a musician, those are some of the things you were interested in. Now I think the industry kind of prides itself on taking advantage of people's short attention span, which is why more artists in the industry are just releasing singles because releasing a whole album when people just listen to it and say, all right, what else do you have? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, right after they listen to the album, and they may not even get through the whole album, and they're ready to listen to the next biggest and baddest record out, so to speak. So, yeah, it's not yeah, um, that way. So, you know, yeah, listeners, <laughs> download the whole CD. I mean, you don't know what you're missing with, with all, all music, really. But, you know, it's funny, when I, uh, when I got home at, uh, from the hospital, one of the problems I had was there were still some drugs in my system, and I, I had uh, temporary memory loss. So, I would, I went, I told her I wasn't allowed to uh, take any baths yet, because my chest was, had been sore apart, and the ribcage ripped apart, and every time I would sneeze, I'd be afraid that my intestines would pop out of my chest and staples would be would pop out. So anyway, I still had to take purpose sets when I got home. So I could only take showers and I had to stay with my back to the to the spray, to the water spraying down and you saw soap because the uh water the soap were too hard. So I wanted to I couldn't wait to take a bath but I couldn't remember what you called it. So my wife Sue was in the living room I say, Sue what you call it when you when you put water in the tub and you sit down she, oh, wow. she, says, she says, take a bath? I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. When can I take a bath? You know, and it was so weird. I'm saying to myself, am I ever going to get my back? So, the whole thing is, you're going to have heart surgery or you're going to have heart surgery or 